Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. How's that for Holy Spirit showing up in your life? We're going to dismiss the kids now. Come up, guys. Let's pray over you. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's got their hands full today. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Jace, you're going to lead them today. Lead them in. Let's pray over you guys. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for these children. You know each one of them. God, we just bless them to you and we give them to your hands, God, to fulfill everything that you have for them, God. Everything that you've brought into their life and you've dreamed them for, Lord, let it manifest. Let it happen. Lord, let their parents be good stewards of the children that you've given them. So we just thank you for children being good stewards of the teachers in front of them and learning and gleaning everything. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. All right. Get out of here. Good job. You guys good today? Hey, as Brother Randy said, listen, um, the lexicon, uh, logos, lexicon, logos, and lexicons is what it's called. Logos, lexicons, right? Is that what it is? Get on that. Get on the app and get plugged into that. You know, um, Brother Randy, he has a lot of stuff that he brings to the app. And, you know, just if you have questions about who God is, what's going on in your life, stuff you're dealing with, just come on the app and bring it on and let us, let us feed you and let us feel, you know, you, sometimes you're going to give us some insight when you're digging in, you're praying, and God's giving you revelation. You can go, hey, I just, the Lord showed me this. If the Lord allows you to show it, sometimes he gives you revelation and don't want you to let anybody else know about it, to keep it to yourself for a little bit. But there's times he says, share it and just get some advice. And so um, we've got great leaders on there, such as um, Brother Randy, and, and it's an amazing platform to just answer some of the questions that you might not be comfortable with asking around some people because they you might think well I've been walking this way for 30 years and 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 I don't know the answer to this well you, you you're, you're going to find a lot of questions you don't know the answer to and that's okay it's okay to be to be in that state of mind to be hungry to want to know the answers to the questions that you have from God and from the word of God If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. I'm reading out the NASB Bible this morning. I read out of three different. I read out the King James, New King James, the NASB, um, New American Standard. Give you time to turn there. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this word today. I don't know what it's going to look like in your ears, but um, I'm excited to give it out, and I pray that you guys just have open hearts to receive. Whatever I say today, don't hear what I'm not saying. Okay? Let me repeat that. Don't hear what I'm not saying, because there's going to be a few things that I'm going to talk about today that you might, it might go over your head or you might not understand it. And if you don't understand, there again, if you don't understand it and I preach something, you're like, what was he talking about? Take that to the app and ask the question, Pastor, what was you talking about when you said this? And give me opportunity or give Brother Randy opportunity to answer those questions because I can't go into full detail because if, if it, if I did, we would be here for more than the time that we're here <laughs> to go into the full detail, to explain every verse by verse what it really means. Because really, each verse, if you look in the library of heaven, each verse has its own library in heaven. Each ver- Listen, each verse has its own library. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine going, okay, Lord, I want to study on this verse right here, verse 25. It says, now large crowds were going along with him. And he returned and said to them, 
verse 26. If anyone comes to me and does not hate, listen, does not hate his father or hate his mother or his wife or his children or his brothers or his sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. There's a library of books on this, this passage right here because, because when you, if you're not in Christ and you don't know the things of Christ, you look at this verse and you go, the Lord said if I don't, if I don't hate my wife or my father or my family or myself, then I can't even be his disciple. Well, what does that mean? If, you know, if you're not seasoned you don't know how to dig through some of these things, you're like, what in the world does that mean? It's like, man, I don't want to hate my wife. I love her. But what he's talking about, if you understand the scriptures, and if you start learning, this Caneo class will teach you well. There's other classes, but this is what we offer. But it'll teach you well that that in the word of God, when God is saying the little minute love that you know right here and his love up here, it's, it's comparison to hate. It's comparison to that because we know so little about what love really is. And when we get to heaven, our minds are going to be blown, hopefully, because we're going to experience that love. We're going to grow in that love as we get to that place of receiving the fullness of God. But we're not going to have it all until we get there and we step over that threshold. And then we have it all. And God's going to show us the true meaning, the full meaning of what love is. Husbands, we don't even know really how to love our wives. But the more we love him, the more we dig into what he is and who he is, we will learn how to love our wives well. The title of the message today is, do we have it? What about the one? What about the one? And we're going to go through these scriptures, but our focus is be thinking, what about the one? Let's read on. It says, whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So if you don't hate everybody in the world, you can't be his disciple. And if you don't carry your own cross, you can't be his disciple. It's what, what, kind of what you're hearing here, but that's not what it says. That's not what it's saying. It's saying whoever does not care. So basically it's saying your minute love and my love are total two different things. And your comparison is, is it would be like hate, but it's not hate. It's love. You love people in a different way. You just don't know how to love them as big as God's love is for everyone. We just don't know how to do that. We've not understood that kind of love. And then it says, whoever whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. There's different different passages that that has. If if you would go to um, Matthew 10.38... In Matthew 10, 38, it says, whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So now we're not worthy of him. So this, this is in other passages. So that's Matthew 10, 38, says not worthy. And then Matthew 16, 24, we go to that one. It says, and Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So you're not, you're not worthy. Deny yourself. Mark says the same thing, deny yourself. And Luke says the same thing. But then Luke says he must deny himself and take up his cross daily. Daily take up your cross and follow me. You remember Paul said, Paul said um, that we daily die out to self. We're daily dying out. We, must, we have to die, guys. Sooner or later, you have to die. Get over it. If you're a Christian, you have to die to self. Okay, and you have to carry that cross. Remember, we talked about Jesus loved all the way to the cross. Well, who carried the cross for Jesus to the cross? A guy named Simon. The the soldiers made him carry the cross. So he carried the cross to Calvary. And that's what we're doing. We're carrying that cross, following Jesus to Calvary, so we can die the fullness of the death that we need to die on this earth. Our flesh. We're going to die. We're going to die in this body. This body is going to die. But we're going to see Jesus and we're going to go to heaven. We're going to make heaven our home in that death. That's that death. But we live within the death. We are alive within that death. If we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, you're going to live either way. You're not going to die, die. Your flesh is going to die. Your body's going to die. But you're not going to die. Your soul is going to be alive. It just depends on where you're going to be alive at. I want us all to be alive in heaven. I want us to be alive with him and serving him and doing what he's called us to do. But listen, it says in 27, it says... Um, whosoever does not carry his cross. And then it says in 28, for which one of you would build a tower? Which one of you would build something and be ready to build something? Have you everybody ever built a house? And did you try to build it with 10 bucks? 
No, you, you laid out the cost that it's going to cost this much to build so you can finish the project because otherwise what it's saying is everyone will look at you like, man, he spent $100,000 to build the house and all he got done is a foundation. When we walk with this way, we've built a foundation on Jesus Christ in this church and we've built, built four pillars, love, identity, freedom, and counter. We have to finish this project. It's going to take all of us together to finish this project, collectively to finish the project that God's called for us to build. So people don't say, well, look at them. They tried to build a house. They got the foundation. They got the pillar, but they couldn't finish it. We need to finish the problem. This region is so tied up with people starting stuff and never finishing anything. This region is bad about that. And we're breaking the stigma of that starting and not finishing what you started. Because we need to be people who go to the finish line and make it to the finish line. We don't want to be ridiculed by the people in the city going, well, they come and they tried, but we dumped water on their fire and it put them out and they, they left. We're not going to do that. Keep dumping water on the fire. We're going to keep praying. It's just going to lick up the water all around. I mean, it's just going to, our fire is going to lick up the water they try to dump on us is what it should happen. Yeah. We should be that much on fire that it licks up the water all around the trough and all around the whole thing to see what happens. And what's going to happen? What do you need? I want to make this clear. We need more knee time and not me time. We're all about me time. Me, me, me. I got to go here. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to, I got to buy this. I got to have this. I got to have this. And then we, we don't have no knee time. Or if we do have knee time, so says, God, will you give me this, 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 and this? That's our knee time. We need more knee time thanking him, praising him. Wednesday nights is a perfect example. We come and just glorify him. And we thank him. We magnify him. We don't ask him for one thing. We just, God, we just thank you for what we do have. And we enjoy what we do have. And we praise you for that. And our Wednesday night meeting is growing and growing and growing and becoming more strong each time that we step into this. I'm not even started yet, man. Or what king, or what king goes out to war and has an army of 10,000, but the ones he's getting ready to fight has 20,000. Well, let me tell you something. If you're centered up, it don't matter if you have 500 or 10. It doesn't matter. When you're centered up with Jesus, you can combat 10,000. It doesn't matter. When you're in that right place with God, no matter what it is, when you're in the right center place with God, you can combat anything that's going on in your life because he's centered. You think, Shelly and I, when we come to this place and we went to start this ministry, we asked the question, we weighed the cost out. Well, Lord, it's going to cost some money to do this. And we said, how are we going to do this? It's going to cost some money. And we said, will you pay for it if we do it? He said, I'll pay for it. Game on. Here we are. We're doing it. We're doing everything he's called us to do, and he's paying for it as we're doing it through you all. Thank you very much. Give yourself a hand. Thank you for doing what God has called you to do. Thank you for helping pay for the ministry that God has for you to pay for. Again, it doesn't matter whether you're driving a trash truck or you're driving a Lamborghini. If you're in the center place with God, you're going to have a glorious time driving a trash truck. Because a guy driving a Lamborghini can't drive the trash truck. He knows how to drive a Lamborghini. But you can be the trash truck driver and go, man, you know what, guy with a Lamborghini? If it went for me, your trash would be piling up on your lawn. But because of me, you get to have a clean lawn. This is just the way it works. We must be comfortable where we are in the skin that God's put us in, in that center place. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We must be comfortable with the position that God has called us to do. It's a temporary position. We have to understand that. When we're here on earth, it's a temporary position in what we're doing. It's, 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 like, it's like a red dot on the line going all the way across the stage. You see that red light right there? It's like the red light. And then this is, this is all of eternity, and this is, our, this is our life right here, this little red dot right here. That's it. That's all it is. We're here for just a moment of time. And Dr. Lairdon said, they, you know, the, the, the professor, when he talked about his, his uh, mom passed away, the, uh, um, a professor called him, a mathematician called him and said, hey, I just wanted you to know that um, if you live 47 more years, when you get to heaven, your mom's only been there an hour. Over the spectrum of a thousand years to God is a hundred or a thousand years to God is a day to man. Or a day to God, a thousand years to man. So think of that when someone passes away in your life, man, it's like, wow, they've been there like maybe a second now, and it's like 10 years down the road. You know, it's just think of in the spectrum of God, this is the timeline. I mean, we have a minute little spot in this timeline, and we must fulfill what we're called to do while we're here in this little spot of timeline of the spectrum of all of heaven. It doesn't matter your position. Again, stay centered up, and you'll be fulfilled with everything God has for you. 
Don't look at the other person. A lot of times we look at the other person, we go, oh, wow, their, their wife is more beautiful than my wife. It looks better over there. I, I, I think it looks better over there. I like it over there. I want to go over there. My wife can't cook like that. My husband never takes the trash out. That guy, I watch him every day, take the, every week, take the trash out for his wife. My husband don't take the trash out at all. Men, women, listen, we have to be comfortable with who God has placed us with, what we have, where we are right now, because the center place is going to take us so much further than you'll ever dream of going if you stay in that place. I like this, it says in verse 32, or else... While the others are still far away and sends a delegation to ask the terms of peace. So then none of them can be my disciple who does not give up all, his own, all of his own possessions. Giving up everything. God, I give it all to you. I lay it all down. Because he said if you don't do that, it's like a salt that has no flavor at all. It's like a salt that's tasteless. And it might as well be good for nothing. It says here, it's tasteless. And it's not even good for the soil or the manure pile. Just throw it out and trot it over your feet. And that's what they did with bad salt in the day. They took bad salt and threw it out in the road and people just walked all over it. It was good for nothing. We must be ready to be seasoned, to pour into people's lives. Again, we're talking about the one person. I'm getting to that. This is just a prelude to that. You remember when Elisha and Elijah were there, and um, if you read your Bibles, Elisha and Elijah were there, and they were getting ready to fight this army, and, and Elisha's like, like freaking out because he's like, what are we going to do? I mean, like, this us against them. And, and Elijah said, hey, Lord, would you open his eyes? And open opened Elisha's eyes, and Elisha saw the armies, the chariot of, 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 of heavenly angels ready to battle for them. He understood. So when you're in the center of God's will, it doesn't matter if you have a thousand people coming against you. When you're in the center, you have the heaven's army all around you to fight for you. We have to understand things in the realm that we're in and out of the realm. We are heavenly beings living on earth. This is not our home. We're just here to do a job here. We're here to do a job. Some people make this as their home. This is my home, and I've got to put everything, invest everything in this. This is not your home. If anything should be stripped away from you today and you be okay with it, because heaven is your home. Because that, because heaven is your home. So Jesus says, so they said that, and in chapter 15, verse 1, he said, Now to all the tax collectors and the sinners who were coming near him, listening to him, both the Pharisees and the scribes would begin to grumble, saying, This man receives sinners. Ooh, boo hoo, he receives sinners and eats with them. Well, come on, let's all eat with each other. Let's have fun. Let's enjoy this place. So he told them a parable saying, What man among you, if he had a hundred sheep, lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine and open the pasture and go after the one which was lost until he finds it? And that's want to talk about the one. Just picture all of us here. If one of us falls away, whose fault is it? I believe that we're accountable to one another. We're accountable to be discerning in the spirit to know where each one is. If you're not a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to. That's a very important part of this process. You need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Otherwise, you have a different dad than we have. You have a different father than we have. But how many of you would, would take the, the one, and this is the church in general, we'll take the one and we will just, um, because it's going to make the church look bad because of the fall. The, this, this, these are talking about Christians. He's talking about Christians here. He's not talking about people in the world. He's talking about 99, 100 Christians here, and one of those Christians fall away. 
as a church, what we do is we get the firing squad out, the 99 lined up, and we're like, all right, you're making us, you're going to make us look bad. So because the world is watching, we're going to go boom, and we're going to put you out of your misery. And then you take that person that has something to do with God because they've opened a door in their life from a trigger that has been pulled, and they step into something they're not supposed to be into, we shun them and push them away. Instead of being what the 99 should be, is grabbing a hold of that one, putting them in the center of us. Can I use anybody for an illustration? Bailey, will you come here a minute? Come on, Bailey, come up here. I love this. Right here, right here, Bailey. Right here, right, just stand right down here. You're good, right here. This is Bailey. Say hi, Bailey. I told her ahead of time I was going to bring her up here. To, she volunteered, so thank you, Bailey. Listen, if one of the sheep fell, if one of our own fell, what would we do? Why would, why would, why would we, why would we? This person has a dream from God to fulfill. If we cut this person off because it might embarrass the church, we should never operate like that. It's happened so many times. Someone does something wrong, and we cast them out because we don't want to be associated with that wrong. It's happened so many times. But if Bailey messes something up, and she's a solid Christian, and she messes something up, I don't know where Bailey is right now with her walk even. But right now it's going to be a powerful moment for her as well as for you. If Bailey is not living for God, the first thing she's going to do is weigh the cost, and she's going to say, Lord, I know to come to you, I have to give away my old way of thinking, my old life, those old things, and I have to come in a relationship with you. I know the cost to that point. But there's a cost beyond that point that she does not know about that we do know about. That's where we, as, dis- as people of God, come around and disciple her to get her to a place to know what we know. There, she's weighed out the cost, and she knows what we know as Christians. And so, but if she doesn't know, she all she knows is she's weighing out the cost as far as she can go from where she was in the world to the cross, asking Jesus to come to her life, live in her heart, and there she is. But what, what about then as she grows and she grows with us and she's a Christian and she walks with us for years? Then all of a sudden, a trigger that she didn't take care of. A lot of you got triggers that you haven't pulled yet. Get every trigger out in the open and pull every one of them. Make it where you can't fire them things again. When the enemy comes by and he tries to, tries to re, recock the gun, he can't because you, you done disassembled the whole trigger mechanism to what you've dug in your life and, you, and he can't do it. It's like, the trigger's gone, dude. You can't do nothing with me. You can't even bring it again. You can't hold it against me. God's done forgive me. I forgive myself. It's gone. Go find someone else. But let's suppose that she is A 10-year seasoned Christian loves God with everything in her. But man, she messed something up. And it's gonna it's gonna look bad on it. And it might and it might bite for a minute. It might bite the church for a minute. <laughs> if we're not in the right place. If we're in the right place, it's not gonna bite, it's not gonna sting, it's not gonna hurt. Because we're going to protect her from the world, from the outside world that's going to try to come in. Because when she got saved, what she didn't know when she said, Jesus, come into my heart, live in my life, what she didn't realize is that the enemy was like, man, we had her. We already had her by default. Jesus paid the price, and now she's introduced herself to Jesus. Then he builds his army to come after her. You don't understand, when you get saved, it's not, it don't stop there. It's like, okay, everybody thinks, I got saved, man, it's all going to be smooth from here. No, it's not going to be smooth. It's going to be in more hellacious than it was when you started the walk. But you got Jesus with you, and he's the center of your life, and you can get through anything because he's with you. So here she is. So she's 10 years walking the walk, and she messes up because she didn't get a trigger pull because we didn't get her discipled enough or didn't dig deep enough into her, her life to, to, to cleanse all the things out of her life. So there's a little trigger that she had. She didn't know, and the enemy found it because she opened a door, and he got to go through that door and pull that trigger. But what we should do when that happens, when that happens, before it even happens, 
we should be discerning enough to know what's going on in her life. We should be discerning enough to know what's going on in each other's life and go, I know my brother's off today. Be vocal enough to go, hey, I, I, I sense you're, you're off today. Something's going on in your life today. How can I pray for you? How can I help you? How can I get you in a better place? That's what we're here to do. Sell it all. Get rid of everything and give it all to him. It doesn't matter. I've sold cars before. I've sold stuff before to give to people to help them out. So here she is. Ten years. Made a mistake. And one by one by one, just come. We're going to pray for her. One by one by one by one, the flock gathers around we gather around her and we pray for her and we pray for her and we do. And this is us. This is Jesus going after, taking the 99 with him and going after the one. It says that he left them in the field because they were where they were. But we need to come after her with him and bear that cross and come after her and help her and get her to a place that she is back on fire for him, back in a rightful place. We don't degrade her. We might take her and, and, and sit her down for a minute and walk her through this position or walk her through this thing that she went through, but we don't leave her there. Yes. We don't leave her there. We pick nice. her back up and we get her back to the place that she's supposed to be restored to because she's had a calling and God's got something for her life right there in that place, in that moment. So Father, we just thank you for Bailey right now, God. Even though she might have fallen, Lord, we thank you, God, that you're lifting her up. You're pulling her up out of the deep miry clay, God, and you're setting her back on the throne room where you had her, God, the place that you had her, Lord, to, to conquer the enemy and the place, God, the, the place that you've set her to conquer, Lord. So we thank you right now for Bailey. We love you for her. We glorify you for her. We magnify you for her. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. And all the house rejoice because the one, because the one come back and he brought the one back. All the house rejoice because of that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Bailey, for help. Let me do that. It's no different than when you go out and someone loses. Anybody ever lost any money and you're like trying to find the money you lost? Anybody ever did that? Man, I love collecting silver. And I tell you what, if I get my silver out and I count my silver and I've got, I've got 10 pieces of silver there and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm counting them and there's only nine pieces, I tell you what, I'm going to put the other silver away, the nine pieces in, back in the safe place, and I'm going to turn all the lights on in the house and find the one piece of silver that I lost. That one thing. The one thing, that the one sheep that fell away, the one sheep that lost its way amongst a thousand Christians. We cannot let that happen. And the prodigal son, you remember the prodigal son. He's looking on the other side. He's seeing all this stuff. He's thinking the world's better over there. And he's like, Daddy, can I have all my inheritance now because I want my inheritance now? He went. He blew everything he had. Blew everything he had to the point that he was eating from the hogs and with the hogs because no one would give him anything. He had all these friends when he had money. And they helped him with everything. They helped him spend all of his money. The Lord gave me a revelation the other day, and, I'm gonna, and this is one of those saying, don't hear what I'm not saying. We have become a wasteful society in a Christian realm. I'm trying to try to explain this clearly because the Lord gave me permission to explain this, but listen. We're to go out and share the gospel to a lost and dying world, Okay? That's our job, to go outside of this wall, outside of the 99, the 100, now that we got the one back, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says to the disciples, he said, when you come to a house and you, and you come to the house and you try to share the gospel and they don't receive you, wipe the dust off your feet, move to the next house. He didn't say, stay at that house and keep, he said, take your blessing back and go to the next house. What we do is we continue to try to bless and try to bless and they take 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 and we bless and they take and they take and they take and then the churches are broke. Why? Because they're, they're giving to the ones who are not receiving him. When he talks about feeding the poor, clothing 
the, give you housing the homeless and clothing the naked. He's talking about the ones who've come to the body of Christ, the ones who have come inside the fold. Yes, we're going to do it outside, and that's fine to get them to the place to receive that. But it's the body. When you get someone down here at the altar and they're praying, they might be poor. We not, might meet, be the disciples that help them lift up and get out of that poor place. Get some nice clothes on. Get in a nice car. Find a nice home to live in off the streets. That's our job as Christians. When they receive Christ, now it's game on because they've accepted our dad. They're now part of our family. When they're outside of the fold, we can share the gospel with them. We can use giving them food, giving them clothes, giving them, as a tool to bring them to receive the gospel. But when they don't want the gospel, you just push, you just say, hey, um, I'm going to go find someone who does. I'm going to go find some who, who will receive the gift of God and what he has. That's what we should do. We should always be that way. But we have literally become a society that we are in, 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 in infuriated or in, in a, I don't even know the word to say, um, so involved in feeding and clothing and housing the ones that want nothing to do with God. And we become a broke church because of it. And we think we're doing something good. But he reminded me this morning, he said the, the one that had the talents, the one that had the one talent, he hid it. It's the same thing as hiding that talent because now you're giving all your money to people he didn't want it to go to to begin with. And then your ones that are in the, in the house that are, that are still poor and still wretched are still there because we haven't put our blessing on them. We haven't discipled them. We, have, we should be like this in the church. This is how we should be in the house. Someone gets up there and they get saved and you're like right here. You're like looking at you like, man, they got saved. That's mine. I'm going after that one. I'm going to be right there to help them. I'm going to lift them. And we should be fighting to get to that person and be the ones that help them get off the ground, help them to get clothed, to help them to get food, to help them to get housing. We should be the ones. But this is what's going to happen. And we can regulate this because we can see what they're going to do. Some people come, they come, they do this so they can get from you because they know how to play the game. I get 100 calls a week. Hey, can you give me a part? Can you give me something to stay? Can you give me a hotel for the night? I'm like, well, how long have you been homeless? Well, I've been out. I've been out for. Um, I've been in the streets for about a year. Well, I think you'd need one more night. Would be you'd be fine one more night. I mean, my heart, my heart goes out for them. But if they don't want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, then I, I don't. I can't. I can't do that because I feel like I'd have to steward what God has given us correctly. I can't give them that money. I can't give them that place to stay because you've already did it for a hundred days. Go for one more. See how that works for you. Until they receive Christ and receive him as Lord and Savior, I cannot help them. I cannot. And I don't think that we should. We share the gospel. We can have events and we can spread the gospel by giving and doing things like that. But we cannot continue to feed into that because it's going to suck God's ministry dry. And then you burn up and then you fail. And then the people says they come and they tried and they failed. Boo-hoo, see you guys. There will be another church coming tomorrow. We cannot continue to operate that way. We cannot continue to kill our own. We have to stay. We have to be ones that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the one to get. And you guys are fighting to be able to disciple that person, to whine them, to dine them, for say, to love on them till they look at their lives. They say, man, I've been so loved by that church. I don't even know what it means to not be loved anymore. Don't even understand it. Don't even remember what it's like not to be loved because of that. That's the kind of life that we're supposed to live. The one. If we can center up with Jesus and know that there's one out there, there's one in here that needs us to disciple them, to help them, to lift them up, to bring them to a place of understanding if they've just come to the cross, to be discernful enough to know if they're doing it. And Jesus said this. You'll know them by their what? You'll know them by their fruit. If there's no fruit coming out of that confession, give it some time. Go and help them a little bit. Don't enable them. Don't just start pouring all your money into them and enable them because then they're, you're going to become their bank account and you're going to become their full-time job. Help them. See if the fruit is there. If there's no fruit, then share the gospel with them. Let them know. You've been pulling my leg all this time. You've been stealing fruit from me. Now it's time to get your life right. Give them that opportunity. Let them get their life right. And watch what happens. 
I don't want us to have things backwards, and I don't want you guys to misunderstand what I'm saying. I, I want us to go out in the highways and byways and, and, and minister to people. If, if, they're, if they're in need, let's, minister, let's help them, but let's don't break our banks to do it. Break our bank if <laughs> this is what happens. You break your bank for the one who is in Christ and has and, and is, we are seeing fruit from you. You keep breaking the bank and all of a sudden you look at your bank account and it just keeps getting loaded back up and you break it again, it's loaded back up and you break it, it's loaded. That's how God works. You break the bank account for him and for one of his children, you go back and look at your bank account and say, where all that come from? Now you're going to have to have a meeting like we talked about last week, knowing where to put all the money. That's how it should be. Our life should be that way. Breaking the bank account for Jesus to watch kingdom grow, watch him grow, watch what he does and how he wants to do in our life. So thank you, Father. Let's stand. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord, that you are a merciful God. God, we thank you for the one, Lord. In the verse 17 of, of chapter 15 of Luke, verse 17, this is what they said about the, the prodigal son. When he come into his right mind, when he come into his right way of thinking, he come back. And his father received him with open arms. When we come into our right way of thinking, we'll understand the fullness of God, who he is, who we are in him, that center place that he has for each and every one of us, no matter what we're doing in life, if we're in that center place, it's going to be the best place to be because you're going to have the most profit in that place. You're going to glean the most. You're going to see the most happen in your life. Remember, we're here just for a moment and then eternity. Take that moment and make it the best moment that it could be for him. Give everything to him and watch what he gives back to you. Father, we just thank you for this house. We thank you for your people this morning. We love you for them. We glorify you, Jesus, for them. Thank you for building up this place and continuing to grow your people, disciple your people, to be them solid people. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pull every trigger that we don't even know about right now. Bam, 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 bam. We pull them all, God, to where the enemy can't have. We shut every door. We slam every door. And we lock them tight so the enemy can't come in, kill, steal, and destroy. He didn't come to kill, steal, and destroy us before because he already had us. But when we come to you, Lord, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And we're going to stop that right now in Jesus' name. We say right now, get behind us in Jesus' name. You have no authority in our lives because we are his. We are his. And greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And we thank you, Father. And we just bless you for this congregation of people. And we bless them this morning with finances, Lord. We bless them this morning with longevity of life, Lord. We bless them with all measure, Lord, of health, Father, this morning. And we speak it over them right now. Break off every bit of poverty mindset, Lord, this morning. We break it off right now in Jesus' name. Self-value, Lord. We just speak self-value into them. If they don't value themselves, we break that off right now in Jesus' name. So if you want to be one of the ones that flocks around that one and, and you don't feel like you're at that place, come and ask the Lord to show you how to get to that place. To get to the place where you're not carrying the shotgun to take them out instead of you're, you're carrying the Bible and prayer to bring them back in and lift them back up. I'm going to give you a moment to pray. Come and pray. I did my part. I'm opening the altars up. It's up to you to Receive what I said, what I had, what the Lord had through me. I bless you. Have a great Independence Day. It's going to be awesome. Celebrate freedom. The world might be in a mess, but we are still free. We're still free in Christ. He set the captive free, and we are free indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Bless you.